I ain't got it. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Money Yachi TV, man. Today, we got Dougie B snatch his chain, shot, and ran up on at Rolling Loud from the Hip Hop Daily YouTube channel, man. Now, listen, I know this is a little bit of old news, but we've been getting in tune with the Bronx as of late, man. We know a lot about K Flock. We know, I know somewhat about B-Love. We know a lot about D-Thing. We getting in tune with these boys, man. But Dougie B, it's still a lot to be kind of figured out about Dougie B, for me at least. You know, a lot of y'all have been, like, kind of giving background in the comments on Dougie B, you know, and, and everything that has been going on with him. But I want to I wanna get more background on him, man. So we ain't doing no more talking. Let's get it. Dougie B is one of the hottest up-and-coming rappers from the Bronx. He blew up as part of the new Bronx drill wave and has been making a name for himself in the industry with his homies K-Flock and B-Love. But before the music, Dougie B had a rough childhood in New York City's wildest block. Let's tap into the career and come up of Dougie B. Dougie B grew up on 187th Street in the Belmont neighborhood of the Bronx. He was childhood friends with K-Flock and B-Love, who also grew up in the same hood. They spent a lot of time together on the block of 187th Street, a dangerous area known as Sev Side. He went to elementary school in Yonkers, a smaller city outside of New York, in Westchester County. But Dougie B still spent most of his youth in the streets of the Bronx and quickly adapted to his environment. When he was only 15 years old, Dougie B witnessed his pops die right in front of him. His dad had an epileptic seizure and ended up passing away. Wow. The rapper made it through this tragic time in his life with the help of his close homies, especially K Flock. After his pops died, Dougie B starts to distance himself from his family and began smoking weed and popping pills to ease the pain. And that's, hey, listen, like you said, that's to ease the pain. People don't understand, like, the same could be said with Youngboy. You know how close Youngboy was with his grandmother. He lost her. You know, you separate yourself. You kind of do your own little thing, and people think that, you know, they'd be like, oh, that's selfish. But listen, that's your way of coping and your way of mourning. You know what I mean? But everybody handled it different, though, man. You can't, shit, you After can't get After his pops died... Dougie B starts to distance himself from his family and began smoking weed and popping pills to ease the pain. He also got deeper into the streets now that he ain't have a stable father figure around to raise him. But his boy K-Flock held him down and they formed a strong friendship that continues to this day. Dougie B also had another close friend named Vlana Roberts. She and Dougie grew up together in the Bronx and after his dad died, she was there to help him through it. But on June 2nd, 2018, Vlana got killed after a stray bullet hit her in the back. Wow. She was standing outside of an apartment building in the West Farms neighborhood of the Bronx when a fight broke out. During the altercation, someone fired a shot, hitting Vlana in the back. She was rushed to St. Barnabas Hospital, but pronounced dead. That's the most sad. tragic part is that Vlana had nothing to do with the fight that broke out. She was just at the wrong place at, at the, the wrong, wrong time. time. Vlana's death had a major impact on Dougie B. Not only did he lose his dad, but then he lost one of his close friends to gun violence when she was just an innocent bystander. The craziest thing, like, with this situation, Dougie B losing her and B-Love losing Diddy, it's like her and Diddy, they had nothing to do with it. It's, it's all about just, it, it, it's your environment. It's guilty by environment. You, you could be, listen, you could be on some completely other shit, trying to leave, and all it takes is the wrong place at the wrong time. That's the most fucked up part about this, man. That's crazy. Impact on Dougie B. Not only did he lose his dad, but then he lost one of his close friends to gun violence when she was just an innocent bystander. To honor her memory, Dougie B got Vlana's name tatted on his arm. After that, he went even harder in the streets and started hitting licks and flipping drugs. He affiliated himself with the Sefside gang, which is made up of both Bloods and Crips. He also had ties to the Mac Baller Brims. This caused a lot of tension with his mom, who just wanted a better life for his son, but he was already too far gone. So, she ended up kicking him out of the house, making him homeless for a while. But despite everything he went through growing up, Dougie B never let it break his spirit. He was determined to do big things and make a name for himself. His homie B Love started rapping and recording music, and eventually Dougie B joined him. Once he started to see the potential in music, he convinced K Flock to join him too. They all worked on music together and helped each other work on their flow. Early on, they wasn't making drill songs, it was just regular rap. But once the drill wave started to pop off in Brooklyn, they hopped on it. Took off but at that, that point, they were still learning the ropes and wasn't making any money from their music. So, for a while, rap took a back seat while they continued to grind in the streets. During this time, K Flock and Dougie B started staying with another popular Bronx rapper from Southside named PNVJ. Jay was one of the first rappers from the Bronx to jump on UK drill beats. Jay grew up with K Flock, who introduced him to Dougie B, and they formed a friendship. Mm. But even friends can turn to enemies when there's money and clout involved. At one point, they fell out, and Dougie B allegedly jacked PNVJ's chain. According to Jay, 
There was some niggas stay snatching chains. Sort of altercation outside the music studio. Dougie B was with his homie Sticky and a group of other dudes from their hood. There was an argument and the people that Jay was with ain't have his back. He tried to put up a fight, but they ended up beating him up and taking his chain. Damn. Not long after, Dougie B popped up on Instagram, with the chain. rocking the chain and taking credit for the robbery. Y'all really robbed a nigga for that. This is the thing. If this is one thing I learned from from everything with with chain snatching, nigga, I don't care if you the homie, my nigga. I'm not wearing my shit around you at all. Cause niggas is grimy out here, man. That's all it take is a chain. Nah. Chain. Not long after, Dougie B popped up on Instagram, rocking the chain. And I don't even think it be because they like the chain. It be just for bragging rights, just to say, yeah, nigga, I took this off of you. Shit, they probably, they, they, niggas don't even be fucking with the chain. It ain't no way he could be fucking with the chain. He just took it just to say I took it. And taking credit for the robbery. This turned out to be a bad idea because someone reported the robbery to the police. Oh. There was plenty of evidence online to prove who did it. So both Dougie B and Sticky got arrested. Dougie B got sent to a juvenile facility where he spent like a year sitting down. PNVJ later said that it wasn't actually Dougie B who took the chain. It was older dudes from their hood who was jealous of his success. But since Dougie was the one flexing on the gram, he went down for it. Around the same time, K Flock also got arrested and spent some time behind bars. So B Love was the only one on the streets to hold it down for the crew. But even though his homies was locked up, B Love kept grinding and started blowing up with his music. K Flock ended up getting out before Dougie and started to capitalize on the success. But Dougie still had access to the internet while he was behind bars and saw his homies coming up. That gave him the motivation to keep his head down and wait for his release date. By the time he got out, everything changed. So he ain't waste no time and got in the booth as soon as he could. The crazy thing is about Dougie B, like y'all noticing like all the music videos with Dougie, he be the hypest one up in there. I'll be saying Dougie B be the nigga that be hyping up the niggas that about to fight. Now the reason niggas be getting brutally beaten because this nigga is one hell of a hype man, man, I'll tell you. But like all the tragedy that he experienced in his life, losing his pops right in front of him, losing his best friend, spending a year behind bars, that shit, like, how do you just, how are you able to just continue to just bring that energy out? You know, that goes to show just the power of music on some real shit. Everything changed. So he ain't waste no time and got in the booth as soon as he could. His first track was a collab with K-Flock and another Bronx rapper named Shy E.K. called No More Free Dougie B. On the track, he let everyone know he was home and had to come claim his spot in the Bronx drill scene. The track racked up over a million views and made Dougie B one of the hottest up and coming rappers in New York. Not long after that, Dougie B, K Flock, and B Love teamed up for the track Brotherly, Brotherly Love, Love that which shit became went one crazy. of the biggest songs of their careers. The video is currently sitting just under 9 million plays on YouTube and introduced the world to the new Bronx drill sound. But success also brings jealousy. Even though he was racking up millions of plays on his music, he was still fresh out of jail and had to hustle in the streets to support himself. Plus, he still had a lot of active beef. Seth's side is known to beef with another Bronx gang called the YGs. They've been locked in a heated war for years. Along with B-Love and K-Flock, Dougie B was becoming one of Seth's side's most popular members. Back in July, there was rumors Dougie B got shot. It ain't clear exactly what happened, but he went live after getting out of the hospital to prove he was still going strong and wasn't going to let it stop him. He continued to clap back at his ops on social media and prove he wasn't backing down. This later backfired after someone hacked his IG and went live wearing an Abe Lincoln mask. But he what? eventually got his account back and kept going strong. In September 2021, he dropped his debut mixtape, hashtag EOS700DOA. The project featured hit tracks like Geek, Dealer Nigga, what kind of cover is this? Kind of national treasure, a, a trapper, kind of what Egyptian album, what, what is this? My nigga, I'm confused. I ain't even honestly you know he dropped. EOS 700 DOA. The project featured hit tracks like Geek, Dealership, and EOS. This mixtape earned Dougie B some major looks in the industry, and he signed a deal with Republic Records about a month later. That put him in a good spot to make the transition from the streets into becoming a full-time artist. Y'all know how many street niggas make that transition? Like on some real shit. Like the rap game, damn near all these niggas started out hustling. Some of these niggas didn't even want to be rappers, and now they all got these big deals, man. It's crazy. But he still had a lot of work ahead of him if he really wanted to blow up. He used to be the fakest niggas would always make it. 
And the real niggas would never make it. Nowadays, man, it ain't nothing but real niggas out here. Niggas that when they rap about this shit, they live this shit. And they all got deals now. Since Dougie B and his homies was reaching the top of the game, they got in a huge fight at Rolling Loud with another Bronx rapper named Ron, Ron Suno. Suno. K Flock and Ron Suno been beefing for the past few months after K Flock claimed to be the king of Bronx drill. Suno clapped back saying he was the one who started the wave and that K Flock was just copying his style. Ron Suno been building a social media following for years with comedy skits and viral videos. He famously created the hashtag weave challenge where he walks up to strangers and pretended he wanted to fight, then fall back and capture their reaction. He then dropped a song called Pinocchio in 2019 that went viral on YouTube and TikTok. He was one of the first rappers from the Bronx to rap over drill beats and was also one of the first to collab with popular Brooklyn drill artists like Chef G and Fabio Foreign. So when k Flock called himself the king of Bronx drill, Suno felt disrespected because he claims to be the one who started the way. If there's one thing I learned from New York niggas, man, all it takes is one nigga to say they the king of something. Everybody at your fucking neck. You can be like, I'm the king. I'm a king of this corner. You got 50 niggas. What you mean, B? You the king of what corner? I'm the king of this corner. Niggas be, listen, New York niggas do not take that king shit lightly. Bronx drill. At all. Suno felt disrespected because he claims to be the one who started the way. So, he and K-Flock started dissing each other on social media. Then, when they ran into each other at Rolling Loud in New York, it was on site. Supposedly, Suno went up to them and tried to talk it out. But after the disrespectful things he said online, K-Flock wasn't feeling it. Dougie B was also there and backed up his homie. After the brawl, Dougie B went on Instagram Live to give his side of the story. He showed the scrapes on his hand from the brawl and said that Ron Suno got his ass beat because he was talking tough online but wasn't with the issue in real life. Ron Suno responded by posting a video claiming Dougie B was about to cry when they jumped him and they just let security fight for him. He also said he stripped Dougie B out of his hoodie and posted a pic to prove it. The fight created a lot of entertainment for drill fans, but it's tough to say if either side came out on top. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt or arrested, but they'll all probably lose money if other festival organizers look at the footage yeah, and decide they don't want them kind of problems at shows. New York drill artists already been banned from performing together at Rolling Loud in the past, and this is the reason why. Because when you bring all the popular rappers from the city together in one place, you can never really tell who's going to have problems with who. If Dougie B, K Flock, and B Love can stay focused and avoid being in the mix, they got promising careers ahead of them. But in a genre like drill, it's hard to avoid the negativity when the beef is a big part of the music. But all three rappers got a lot of talent, and if they stay focused on the music, it's no telling how far they'll go. This nigga videos be ending so abruptly, man. Dougie B, man. So we actually got a lot of good background on him on this, man. Dougie B snatches chain shot, ran up on at Rolling Loud from Hip Hop Daily. Link down below in the description for y'all to check this video out in its entirety, uninterrupted. Y'all new to the channel, y'all rock with me. One daily reaction videos. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me to the next video. I'll see y'all then. Thank you for watching Money Yachi TV. I'm out. I ain't got it.